Welcome to our Quantification with Droplet Digital PCR instructional module. My name is Frank Biswarn and I am part of the Digital Biology Group of Biorad Laboratories. In this short module, I will introduce the concept of digital PCR and describe how we can accurately count nucleic acid molecules. At some point in your molecular biology work, you surely ask the question, how many copies of my target molecule are present in my sample? Chances are you have used the most popular technique for quantifying nucleic acids, quantitative PCR. Quantitative PCR or qPCR is a powerful technique, but it has its limitations. When higher accuracy and precision is required, or when the sample or targets are more challenging, droplet digital PCR is the go-to technology. You have probably heard of DDPCR as you are currently watching this video. What you may not know is that digital PCR was invented before qPCR, but it was unaffordable and technically challenging until recently. DDPCR is a direct molecule counting technique. It can be used to quantify both DNA and RNA. As you can see, the results can be quite impressive. This is an example of a duplex reaction where a 10% dilution series of Staph aureus was amplified in the presence of a constant concentration of human genomic DNA. The error bars represent 95% confidence intervals. You may be wondering how these levels of precision are achieved when quantifying a target nucleic acid. It boils down to a combination of chemistry and statistics. On the chemistry side of things, DDPCR involves taking what would be a typical 20 microliter qPCR reaction and breaking it up into tens of thousands of subreactions in a process called partitioning. These subreactions are then amplified in a thermal cycler and subsequently analyzed for the presence or absence of the target of interest. Finally, the data points are plotted on a graph. This is an example of what the data for each reaction can look like. For each well, the amplitude of each droplet is plotted in a graph with fluorescence amplitude on the y-axis and droplet number or event count on the x-axis. Droplets that had the target of interest in them at the beginning of the reaction had that target region amplified and with the use of probes or dyes generated a subsequent specific fluorescence signal. A threshold is set to separate what we decide are positive droplets depicted by the blue dots versus negative droplets depicted by the black dots. In the example we have here, we would set the threshold at about a thousand fluorescent units. As DDPCR is an endpoint analysis reaction, the actual amplitude of each droplet is not important. Anything that is reasonably higher than the negative group is assigned as positive. These reactions are called digital due to the nature of the analysis, with droplets either positive or negative, and when translated into computer jargon, having a value of 1 for positive droplets and 0 for negative droplets. As we count the number of positives, it is temp tempting to simply use that number and call the sample. In the example on the screen right now, Using 6,898 positive droplets as the concentration of our target of interest would actually be incorrect. To illustrate how molecules are counted, here is a simplified view of the process. Let's pretend we have four samples and we split our reactions into 143 droplets for each sample. In the first sample, after amplification, we do not detect any positive events. It is therefore reasonable to assume that sample 1 is negative for our target of interest. In the second sample, we detect six positive droplets. Therefore, we can assume that the number of copies of our target of interest is around six. In the third sample, we detect 34 positive droplets and are probably tempted to say that the number of copies in that sample is 34. In the fourth sample, we see 70 positive droplets. And here again, we are probably tempted to say that we have 70 targets of interest in that sample. If we were to use direct counts, our analysis for samples, sample two is a little bit off, while samples three and four would be incorrect. 
This is the point where statistics comes in. When molecules are randomly distributed in a set of droplets, if we have low levels of our target of interest, it's probable that each one will land in its own droplet. On the other hand, as concentration increases, the probability that two of our molecules of interest or more end up in the same droplet increases. To correct for this effect, we use Poisson's equations for his law of small numbers. His equations have been around for over 200 years and are very well established. This is the formula we use to calculate concentration. Copies per microliter of reaction equals the negative ln of the number of negative droplets divided by the number of total droplets. This value is then divided by the volume of our droplets. With this in mind, if we go back to our examples from a few slides ago and look at sample 1, it would be safe to say that that sample is negative for our target of interest. Applying Poisson correction, the other three samples would slightly change. Sample 2 would change the 6.2 copies instead of the 6 copies we predicted. That is close, but the 0.2 difference is for accuracy and is due to the fact that even though we only have 6 positive events, there is a small probability that two of our target molecules may have ended up in the same droplet. For the same reason, sample 3 is likely to contain 38 molecules of interest instead of 34, and sample 4, 96 instead of the 70. As concentration increases, so does co-occupancy, and these must be corrected using Poisson's equation. Now, of course, remember that 143 droplets is not a realistic number of droplets to use. As with any statistical analysis, the more events that are analyzed, the more precise and accurate the results will be. We normally use at least 10,000 droplets to get good statistical representation of the true value in our sample. Let's go back to our first example where we saw 6,898 positive droplets and 13,232 negative droplets. We can calculate the actual concentration by using Poisson's equation. The negative ln of negative droplets, 13,232, divided by the total number of droplets read, 20,130, and then divided by the volume of our droplets, which in this example is 0.85 nanoliters, would give us a concentration of 494 copies per microliter. We would multiply this value by the number of microliters in our reaction, in our case 20, and get a total value of 9,880 copies for the entire reaction. This value is different than the 6,898 positive events we have read because it now takes into consideration co-occupancy and the random distribution as we corrected by Poisson analysis. Now, of course, bear in mind that there is analysis software that will automatically calculate these values for you. As you have hopefully seen, Molecular counting with DDPCR is relatively straightforward and conveys many advantages over qPCR and other nucleic acid quantification techniques. Precision and accuracy, absolute quantification without standards, higher order multiplexing, high sensitivity in complex backgrounds, and robustness all make droplet digital PCR an ideal technology for nucleic acid analysis. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. For more information on the digital PCR and its various applications, download the Droplet Digital PCR Applications Guide, Bulletin 6407 from biorad.com and or partake in another module from our Master Classes site. Additionally, a series of overviews and application-specific protocols relating to Droplet Digital PCR is available from Springer Publishing. Look for their Methods in Molecular Biology series, volume 1768. Thanks again.